okay so good morning everyone today we will continue with our presentation on the breast calcifications and what do we need to know about them the mammographic evaluation of breast calcification uh, last time we talked about the different patterns of benign breast calcifications now we will uh, continue with talking about the calcifications that are associated with masses with breast masses and we, by what we mean by masses is any space occupying lesion it can be soft tissue or cystic even a cyst is a mass if it's considered a space occupying lesion okay can you tell so let's start with the benign masses okay thin well defined curvilinear calcifications can be seen in the wall of the cysts especially oil cyst and sometimes silicone granulomas. What do we mean by silicone granulomas? Previously, breast augmentation surgery, okay, it was done not by uh, putting a sack or a bag of silicone. It was done by injecting silicone directly into the breast, okay? They just inject it directly and make the uh, breast augmentation surgery. This might result in silicone granuloma. Sometimes if silicone leak from a cyst is... Uh, happens, it will cause some sort of silicone granuloma. That's inflammation around the silicone as a foreign body. Okay? The old style. Now it's better uh, implants and better uh, chemical composition of the silicone. So this is less likely to happen nowadays. Some of these calcifications, they have loosened center calcification. Okay? Then the calcification is in the wall. The loose center is loosened. When it is less than one millimeter thick, Eggshell or rim, rim type calcification. It's called eggshell or rim type. If the calcification is very thin, oil cyst can contain calcification within the cyst, so that when you, when it makes like fluid calcium level. Let's say, if you see it in craniocaudal view, it will be amorphous. While if you see it in oblique view, there will be what's called teacup appearance. We'll see some examples of that. Okay, uh, that's what we talked about, the oil cyst. So when you see the teacup appearance, it is definitive diagnosis of oil cyst. Okay, micro cysts and milk of calcium can be multifocal and bilateral in women with dense tissue or focal and unilateral. So you can see it focal, multifocal, unilateral or bilateral. Everything is possible. Okay. In some patients, me, milk of calcium involves macrocysts. It's not common, but might happen. Let's see some examples about that. For example, here, uh, just a second. Uh, this is an axial or rim calcification in a loosened center. You can see the center of this cyst is relatively loosened compared to the wall. Okay. And this is in a different patient. You can see different cysts here and there of different sizes and at different stages of calcification of wall calcification the axial you can see this one is probably not calcified while this has some more wall calcification this is calcified cyst wall okay oil cysts uh, at this patient the third one you can see rim calcification around several silicone granulomas you can see this is ill-defined like mass-like lesions here and there these are silicone granulomas and you can see calcified cysts developing in between them and around them this is the old type of breast augmentation injecting silicone directly into the breast tissue without a containing capsule بدون keys مجرد direct injection okay this was the old way it's very rarely done now uh, and this is, you can see, a large size macro cyst with a wall calcification. Not sh only micro cysts can be seen in macro cysts, in big cysts. Okay? All of these are by rods. How much? Two. Two. Good. Again, another example, you can see this relatively loose and center calcification in air area of fat necrosis. Okay? Uh, and on follow-up mammogram, subsequent mammogram, 
they either stabilize, become denser, and smaller. The, because of the healing process, they will become smaller, denser, more dense, and more calcified. Okay? So, this is the same patient after like two or three uh, days. Oh, uh, sorry, years. Okay? Now, what about this one? What do you think is going on here? This is what's called milk of calcium. When you see the craniocaudal view, you know the craniocaudal view, they take it superior inferiorly. While mediolateral oblique is from medially to laterally. That's what's why it's called mediolateral, craniocaudal. Okay? So, in the superior to inferior, you see the calcium in face. You see it like you're looking from above. Imagine a bowl containing water and calcium. If you are looking from above, you'll see just some round density, nothing else, like here. This is maybe L-defined, uh, amorphous, calcific fossa here and there. Take the craniocaudal view, you see it from the side, you'll see the fluid up and the calcium down. You'll see like fluid calcium level, like here. You can see this level, this level, this level, it's teacup appearance, just like a teacup. The calcium forms a fluid level, okay? And this is diagnostic or pathognomonic of, cal of oil cysts or milk of calcium. It is birad 2. Good. Other example. In the craniocaudal view, you can see there are multiple, maybe polyhedral foci of calcification. Well, they are grouped in the breast, and they might be somewhat suspicious group micro calcification or small calcification let's say well just take it into a 90 degree view and you can see they are all showing teacup appearance i think i hope it's obvious here you can see this teacup appearance okay due to the layering of the fluid and the calcium and this is definitive for milk of calcium Okay, and it is by rad two. Okay, I, I hope it's obvious here that there are some uh, teacup levels. Okay, it's linear, linear curve. no, no, this is not linear, this is polyhedral. Okay, let's say round, you can describe it as round on the craniocaudal view. When you take it at the mediolateral view, mediolateral oblique view, MLO view, okay, you'll see. It's like fluid up and yes. calcium down. Exactly. It's like a fluid calcium level, okay? Mm -hmm. Indicating this is a calcified oil cyst. That's why always you need two views at least, okay? And maybe some additional views. Again, the same example. You can see here it might look suspicious. Some amorphous calcification. They don't have any specific shape. They're not round, they're not tri triangular, they're not uh, uh, well-defined, they are not, okay? Well, take a MLO view and you'll see what? Teacup appearance indicating calcified oil cysts or milk of calcium appearance, which is a Byrads 2. You send the patient home, okay? Another example. You can see here dense granular tissue with amorphous calcification. What is the shape of these calcific foci? It's amorphous. It doesn't have any shape. Okay? They are not round. They are not triangular. They are not, uh, uh, not nothing. Okay? Amorphous without a shape. Okay? And when you take it in the MLO view, you can see it's what? It's very obvious here to be a calcium level, like a milk of calcium indicating a benign process. <coughs> Again, by rods what? Two. So, you can confidently say, say it is by rods one? Yes. Because it's dense, there is no These calcifications are by rods two. If you see yes. something else, yes. that's a whole new classification. Like if you see, for example, a speculated mass, then you go from two to five. Yeah, the, you will, it will depend on what you see. 
you decide what to do according to what you see. If you are evaluating these calcifications, you don't need to do anything. If you are suspecting something else, then you go for spot compression views, magnification views, ultrasound, stereotactic biopsy, whatever the case requires, according to the case. Okay? So. There is no mass here. Yeah, there is. If there is a speculated mass, do you, you have a, this is benign calcification, leave it. Now you evaluate the mass. The mass will be 4C or 5 or whatever you like. Okay? Yani you go with the highest buy rats. Milk of cal or teacup appearance seen in craniocaudal caudal view, true or false? It's false. It's on ML of you. Okay? Keep that in mind. Good. <clears throat> now, suture calcifications. If a patient do any surgery for any reason, the surgeon will leave sometimes some stitches, sutures. These sutures can calcify. Okay? They may look like knots, evenly spaced, curvilinear, loopy, forms like loop-like. Uh, they may be linear smooth borders, and they will be limited to the site of the biopsy or the surgery. It's not, you don't see it everywhere. It's just at the site where the suture was done. Okay? Usually, it is not common or rare if the breast is not irradiated. When a patient does lumpectomy, surgery with lumpectomy, and then they give radiation, radiotherapy, this is where more likely to be calcified, the sutures. Without radiation, unlikely to be calcified. Usually, it does not calcify, okay? Parasites can cause breast calcification. It's rare, it's not common. You, we rare, for me, I've never seen it, to be honest, okay? But it should be kept in mind, okay? There are a lot of types of, of parasites that are seen in the breast, including filariasis or concercariasis. I never memorized these names, even in college. It's so, so bad. <laughs> okay, loiasis, Lo all of which tend to localize in the subcutaneous tissue. So it does not invade the breast itself. It's in the subcutaneous tissue. It's in the skin, not the glandular tissue. Okay, uh, they can calcify, developing linear, curvilinear, coil, this like, bead like, serpiginous calcification can be seen in isolation or with uh, soft tissue component. You can see it somewhere else also, in addition to the breast. Some specific type of uh, parasites can, uh, called trichinosis develops in the pectoral muscles. It's not in the breast, it's in the muscle, in the deep part, not in the superficial part, the skin and subcutaneous tissue. It's in the muscle. They occur as a peer, well defined peer like calcification, diffusely scattered, limited to the pectoral muscles. You don't see them in the glandular tissue, you don't see them in the skin, you see them in the pectoral muscle. Okay? These are different types of calcified parasites within the uh, breasts. Uh, you can see the dense, coarse, linear, serpiginous calcifications. Uh, this is a subarular sub area demonstrating slightly different appearance of the calcification in the, between A and B. This one and this one. Here, uh, you can see linear coiled and serpiginous calcifications also due to some kinds of parasites. This is the trichinosis that we talked about. You can see this. Uh, Punctate calcification, it's within the pectoral muscle. This is the pectoralis muscle. You can see the muscle fibers just going longitudinal. It's within the muscle. Okay? Of course, this is a magnified view. It may be difficult to appreciate. Uh, you need to see the whole view for better evaluation. And the funny thing is when you see that and you do an ultrasound, nothing in the breast. You will not uh, be able to see the, this is on an ultrasound in the pectoral muscle. Very difficult to be seen, okay? You're looking for something in the breast, you're doing ultrasound, there's nothing. You go back to mammogram, it's diffuse. So keep that in mind. It might, just might be parasites, okay? Now, let's go to the 
heavy things calcification associated with malignancy what do we need to know about that which kinds of calcification are associated with malignancy where do they occur how do they occur how to evaluate them the most common cancer the uh, breast type of breast carcinoma that causes malignancy is ductal carcinoma inside dcis which is non-invasive or intraductal and it should be distinguished from invasive or extraductal disease if it is within the duct it's non-invasive it is ductal carcinoma in situ in place when it becomes extraductal it becomes uh, different like like a different classification like a different uh, severity of the disease okay it's very different from each other uh, calcification usually uh, detected in the DCIS in asymptomatic patients so that's the type of the calcification that we look for in a screening mammogram we are looking for calcifications in cases of ductal carcinoma in situ because these patients are usually asymptomatic and we need to detect them before it gets bigger and then gets invasive carcinoma change from in situ to invasive Mafum? okay rarely rarely DCIS can present as macrolobulated or speculated mass or area of distortion palpable mass spontaneous nipple discharge which can be serous clear or bloody or patchy disease of the nipple all of these are possible presentations of DCIS but most common presentation of DCIS is asymptomatic okay DCIS is a heterogeneous disease. It's not like one kind, one way of progression. It's different behavior, let's say. Uh, all cases should not be grouped into one uh, way, let's say. Okay? Yani, if you have like two patients of DCIS, does it mean that both of them, they will have the same prognosis and the same progression and the same treatment? Everyone is different. Okay? Some forms, they will progress to invasion with rapid time course, like aggressive DCIS. You just, you begins DCIS rapidly, goes into invasive carcinoma. Others might remain in situ for years. Years, DCIS, it's still in, uh, low grade and uh, non-invasive. Okay? Yeah, 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 exactly. Low grade DCIS are the lesions that may never progress to invasion. They're low grade. Okay? They will never progress to invasion. So, consequently, some patients may be over treated or under treated. If it's low grade, it will never progress to invasion. And you, the surgeons or whatever they do, mastectomy and radiation, it's over treated. It will never progress. You can send her home, nothing will happen. Just follow her up. Okay? Or sometimes, if you are, okay, I, it's a DICIS, I will send it wrong, and then suddenly it progresses to invasion. So it's not that easy to deal with, you know? The calcifications we detect mammographically in association with the cellular proliferation process develops in the luminal secretions. The, the duct will secrete things in the lumen. The calcifications that we see are the ones in the lumen not in the tumor okay sometimes uh, in this necrotic cellular debris in the lumen the cells die and they go into the lumen of the duct and these cells they calcify so we are not seeing the tumor we are seeing the cal the secretions in the ducts okay and <clears throat> sometimes occur between the cells the cribriform space between the proliferating cells are well defined the calcifications are well defined punctate oval round amorphous variable densities within a cluster or between clusters you can see different clusters each one with different density or one cluster with different densities okay so it's like very variable okay so in some patients the linear orientation and segmental keep that these points in mind linear orientation segmental distribution round punctate the features that helps you to decide this is might be a DCIS 
when associated with DCIS is more in low or intermediate grade. Yani if DCIS are good uh, or not good, I mean less malignant, intermediate or low grade, okay, you will see uh, calcifications. Calcifications that can't low or intermediate grade DCIS. Okay, the higher the nuclear grade, the more aggressive forms of DCIS usually does not have calcification. Okay? So, if you see malignant shape calcifications, you think of DCIS, which is it low or intermediate or high grade? Let's say, I'm good. Low malignancy or high malignancy? No. Low malignancy. So, calcifications relatively good news. It's not good news. No one is happy about DCIS, but okay? So, keeping in mind tumor without oh, breast malignancy without calcifications more likely to be high grade. Yes. So, it's not good news. If you see calcifications, it's more likely to be low or intermediate, which is relatively good news. Yani the best news is having no calcification and no tumor at all. This is the best. But if there is, it's okay. It's low or intermediate. Okay? Sorry? There is a there is nothing specific about anything. Everything have a differential. Even in the one of the last talks, I think uh, we uh, we saw some classifications that the differential diagnosis includes two carcinoma and fibroadenoma. They can be they can have the same kind of classification. We, all we do is to suspect and then go from there. You go for a compression view. You go for a pro, uh, an ultrasound. You go for possibly elastography, you go for a biopsy, you go for excisional biopsy, mastectomy, lumpectomy, according to the case. I'm talking about things, how to, we suspect. And if there is MS, and you have facial diagnosis, but will you put the DCIC? The type of the DCIC may be low or intermediate? Yeah, exactly. When, when, when it's seen, most likely it will be either low or intermediate grade, exactly. Keep in mind, sometimes you see the calcifications in the area of hyperplasia or atypical hyperplasia. So it's not a carcinoma, not a malignant. It's hyperplasia or atypical hyperplasia that develops usually next to the malignant cells. So you have, let's say, a focus of malignant cell, and around it is an area of hyperplasia. The calcification is in the hyperplasia area, not in the tumor itself. And usually, uh, the, the, the malignant area might have no calcification, okay? So you need to do a, like a big excision. Get it? You see the calcifications within the area of hyperplasia nearly adjacent to the malignant lesion, okay? And most of the times, mammography underestimates the size of the tumor. You see the the calcification, or let's say, the calcification is within like few millimeters, but the malignant area is like much bigger. So you don't tell the patient, well, you have a smaller tumor because on the, the calcification, the mammogram is like within five millimeter or one centimeter. The tumor might be larger. You cannot judge the size of the tumor on the calcifications. Get it? For example, in this case, this is a DCIS, case of ductal carcinoma in situ. I will explain to you and you'll tell me which grade is this. There is a f here a four millimeter focus of grade one. Oh, sorry, I blew it. Uh, so it's a grade one, it's a low grade. Okay, no problem, I have a lot of more other cases, don't worry about it. Spot compression magnification view, they're showing punctate low density calcification, okay? with suggestion of maybe some associated distortion here and there. It's, we are not sure, okay? Some calcifications here and there. And, and follow up, they were increasing in number, okay? This 
is four years after this. So they followed up for four years, okay? And they were just increasing in number. So what they did, they did a biopsy, stereotactically guided biopsy, okay? The calcification confirmed on the radiograph of the, when they do a biopsy, they just make a mammo or an X-ray of the sample, okay? To confirm that they biopsized the right place, okay? Uh, and what was reported is sclerosing papilloma. So they show this calcification, followed up after four years, it's increasing in number, biopsized, it was sclerosing papilloma. And then the same patient, three years after the imaging biopsy, so now it's seven years, okay? And again, they were increasing in number. Compare this one, this one, and this one. So at time zero, after four years, after seven years. They are increasing in number. So it was, uh, I don't know, they are getting more and more in number, suspicious. Huh? Do an ultrasound and there was like this hypoechoic mass. And on after they, bio, uh, they, they did, uh, the mass was suspicious. So it was removed, excisional biopsy. Okay, they did the uh, X-ray of the specimen confirming that the uh, calcifications are excised and it was uh, what? DCIS. Grade 1 DCIS, low grade DCIS. Okay, so low grade should be careful because we have seven years of progression and still in situ, it's not developing into invasive. So keep in mind, if the carcinoma is low grade, the follow-up after six months would be useless. If you do another mammogram after six months, nothing will happen. It will be the same. You need to do a follow-up after years in cases of low grade. Okay? It is very slow to progress. So what I mean, don't send the patient and tell her come after seven years. No. You continue with the screening program yearly, but when you compare, you compare this with the first mammogram that was done two, three, four, five, six years ago, you compare, okay? And that's why it's important to keep the old images in order for you to be able to compare. Again, another example, it's a DCIS, it's a low nuclear grade, there is no necrosis, no central necrosis in it. This is a screening view demonstrating the cluster of amorphous calcification. You can see here, there are calcifications, but they are not any shape, not taking any form, not taking any specific distribution, okay? And on the magnification view, it was confirming the cluster of calcification with a larger area than suspected on the screening view. You can see here and here, and now it's much larger area of amorphous, ill-defined calcification. It was a Byrads. Which Byrads would you give that? Sorry? Four. Yeah, exactly. It's a four. It's not speculated mass. It's not five. It's highly suspicious. You need to take some something about it. You need to do a biopsy and FNA or whatever you like. Okay? Another example. It's a DCIS, it's a low nuclear grade, no central necrosis in this case. Uh, this is a craniocaudal view demonstrating area of distortion, some central lucency here and there, with low, uh, this is a calcified oil cyst, okay? It's obvious, the eggshell calcification in the wall. Don't worry about that. Look about here. It's irregular, amorphous, ill-defined, and when you take a magnification view or spot compression view, you can see the cluster some amorphous calcification with an area of possible distortion. And this is the suspicious part, okay? And when, you, when they excised it, it was grade one invasive ductal carcinoma associated with, uh, uh, this, with these calcifications, okay? Again, low grade. And uh, they did a lumpectomy here, not a mastectomy, which is good because it was a grade one. So. It's non, yani slowly progress, very slowly progress. Another example, DCIS in a micro, micro papillary cribriform pattern. 
with no central necrosis. And when I'm talking about central necrosis, I mean histopathologically. Not, uh, we cannot see this central necrosis. I'm talking about the histopathology results. So this is post-compression view uh, of the left sub area demonstrating some round, punctate, amorphous calcification here and there. You can see different distribution, different shapes. <clears throat> in a linear orientation, you can see this going like that, and this going like that. It's like in a segmental linear. You can see it's beginning in a wide, and then going into like ductal distribution. Get it? You can see this is wide based, and then it goes into the nipple like this. Huh? Uh, the patient breast is diffusely involved with rounded pocket calcification. A mass is palpated in the central portion of the breast, and this was a 48-year-old woman with no previous mammogram in nine years. And it was excised, and grade one invasive ductal carcinoma reported with eight of 19 axillary lymph nodes positive for metastatic disease. So it takes like maybe up to nine years for this to develop. Okay. Another example. Sorry. Difficult. Yeah, it is. It's not easy. Um, that's why we are seeing different examples. We are discussing it. You need to go to the mammography unit, see cases, practice on them, and take these patients to the ultrasound. Do the ultrasound for them, and possibly advise a. Uh, FNA and excision biopsy, advice a stereotactic biopsy, a true uh, ultrasound, whatever, according to the case, yes. to make more practice. Okay? And as much as possible, try to keep the old images. After even five years, ten years, you might need the old images because of this low grade DCIS. It will progress very slowly, needs time. Anyway. Let's look at this case. This is a clinical view from screening study demonstrating the new cluster of calcification in the medial aspect of right breast. You can see some calcifications here. This tick, 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 tiny ones. This is a new cluster. On the comparison with the previous one, it was not present. Okay? So, what virus do you give this new cluster of calcification? So what you virus you give? Two. Sorry? Two. What do you think? Two. You said I must magnify it. Yes. If you consider it two, you send the patient home. Yes. You don't I magnify it. Two, 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 two and three. I'm Both of them are benign. Two and three are benign. Four, four. You send the patient. So now we are going for four. Bad. <laughs> right. You need to do something else. So it's incomplete evaluation. What virus do you give for incomplete evaluation? Zero. 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 When it's incomplete evaluation, you give a virus zero. I need to do something else. Yes. Okay? Yes. You started very well. You know, I need to do something else. Yes. Then you started giving virus and going up. No, it's zero. Incomplete. Okay? Incomplete evaluation. So we go for the spot compression view, the magnification view here, and you can see round punctate and amorphous calcification, variable density. Some are dense, some are less dense, some are very, some are very faint. And because there are no co uh, new compared with the prior studies, biopsy is recommended. And now you give it by rods four. four. Okay? And by biopsy, they were, they were epithelial hyperplasia. Okay? This is atypical ductal hyperplasia, dense. You can see there are some calcifications here. I hope it's present here and there, some faint amorphous calcification, low density. And when they excised it on a higher magnification view, there are tightly packed punctate calcification. This is the excised segment. You know, this is the guide wire they put in the lesion. And you can see very tightly packed punctate calcifications, okay? And I think we'll stop here because it's 9 o'clock now. And we'll continue next week with our last part of the breast calcification. Okay?